In 2018, the infrastructure branch of the Caisse de dépôt et placement du Québec broke ground on the $6.3 billion Réseau Express Métropolitain. Now a $9.4 billion project, the fully automated 67-kilometer light rail with 26 stations is being rolled out in stages, with the South Shore to downtown segment opening in 2023 and the additional branches to the West Island, North Shore and airport expected by 2027. With the predicted initial ridership of more than 167,000 passengers per day, the REM has the potential to transform land use and transport patterns across Greater Montreal as projects at this scale have done elsewhere. With support from Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada and the Canadian Institute of Health Research, transportation research at McGill began measuring the unfolding impacts of this major infrastructure project in 2019. A team of more than a dozen researchers from across a range of public health, engineering, geography, environment, and urban planning disciplines has been evaluating the REM's impacts on health, travel behavior, and equity both during construction and post-launch. Since 2019, detailed information has been collected from a sample of over 24,000 residents in the Montreal metropolitan region in five survey waves, including respondents living near REM stations and a control group comprised of those living further away from the REM. 4,600 participants have responded to two or more waves of the survey, generating valuable longitudinal data. Public perception of the REM has remained generally positive and stable over time. However, construction brought stress. About one in five respondents reported negative impacts on their mood with concerns about air and noise pollution. Post-opening, over a third of South Shore and Nuns Island residents now experience faster morning peak travel to downtown. Nearly half gained better access to jobs, especially near REM stations, but others saw no change or longer travel times. Early findings suggest the REM has positive impacts on riders' quality of life, with reports of improved mental health and punctuality at work surpassing outcomes reported by bus and metro users. And in other areas, such as physical health and overall life satisfaction, the REM is placing not far behind the metro. Gaps between projected or intended use and actual use of the REM have emerged. Notably, pre-COVID projections estimated 34,000 daily riders on the South Shore branch, but regular weekday usage is closer to 24,000. Insights into how initial intentions translated into behavior are also revealing. 14% of South Shore men who intended to use the REM did not follow through while 36% of women who hadn't planned to use it ended up doing so. Neighborhoods surrounding the REM stations are reacting differently to the new light rail. Nuns Island Station embraced the opportunity for development and redrew zoning maps to increase density, mixed land uses, and decrease parking requirements. In contrast, En Salome in the West Island was unsuccessful in leveraging the arrival of the REM to transform its nearby land. Housing prices increased after the REM was announced in 2016, but dipped near operating stations once trains started running, likely due to noise concerns. Thanks to the CIHR, TRAM will continue tracking the impacts of the REM on the region and collect data through 2029. To stay updated on how this major project is reshaping Montreal and to read the progress reports, visit tram.mcgill.ca.